Welcome to Do the Math America. I am Charlene, the math shaman. Dividing fractions is found on pages 73 through 78 of the beginning algebra book. Please use the link in the description box below this video for the PDF file to print out a hard copy of this book for yourself. Rules for dividing fractions. One, to divide with fractions, we multiply the reciprocal of the divisor. Two, multiply as the rules in section 4-4. Four, four. Three, Division by zero is undefined. It means division by zero is not allowed. Reciprocal. Two numbers are reciprocals of each other if their product is one. Reciprocal. Two numbers are reciprocal of each other if their product is one. Two thirds times three halves equals six sixths. Six divided by six equals one. So two thirds and three halves are reciprocal. Seven tenths times 10 sevenths equals 70 over 70, or 70 divided by 70, which equals one. So seven tenths and 10 sevenths are reciprocal. Two times one half equals two over one times one half, which equals two halves, which equals one. So two and one half are reciprocal. Zero has no reciprocal. And the reciprocal of one is one. Dividing by a number gives the same result as multiplying by its reciprocal. 15 divided by three equals five. The reciprocal of three is one third. 15 times one third equals 15 over one times one third, which equals 15 thirds or five. So dividing by a number gives the same result as multiplying by its reciprocal. 15 divided by two thirds, we multiply 15 by the reciprocal of two thirds, which is three halves. So we would do 15 times 3 halves, which gives us 15 over 1 times 3 halves. And we multiply the numerators across and the denominators across to get 45 halves, which is 45 divided by 2, which is 22 and 1 half. And we box our answer. One third divided by two thirds equals one third times three halves. The threes in the numerator and denominator cancel and we multiply across to get one half. And we box our answer. Negative four fifths divided by seven thirds equals negative four fifths times three sevenths. We multiply the numerators across to get 12, and we multiply the denominators across to get 35. So the answer is negative 12 30 fifths, and we box our answer. 7 thirds divided by negative 2 and 2 thirds. First convert the mixed number, negative 2 and 2 thirds, into an improper fraction and we get 8 thirds, or negative 8 thirds, and then we recopy the problem from before. So it's 7 thirds divided by negative 8 thirds. Now we multiply 7 thirds by the reciprocal of negative 8 thirds, which is negative 3 eighths. So the threes cancel to leave us with negative 7 eighths, and we box our answer. Zero divided by two fifths equals zero. Two fifths divided by zero is undefined because you cannot divide a number by zero. Two and one fifth divided by three and three quarters. First, we must convert the 
mixed numbers into improper fractions, which gives us 11 fifths divided by 15 fourths. So we rewrite the problem as 11 fifths divided by 15 fourths. Now we multiply 11 fifths by the reciprocal of 15 fourths, which is 4 fifteenths. We multiply the numerators across to get 44, and we multiply the denominators across to get 75, which gives us 44 over 75, and we box our answer. 4 sevenths divided by 5 equals 4 sevenths divided by 5 over 1. So we multiply 4 sevenths by the reciprocal of 5 over 1, which is 1 fifth. Now multiply the numerators across to get 4 and the denominators across to get 35. Negative 7 divided by negative 4 and 2 thirds. So first we rewrite the mixed number as an improper fraction. So negative 4 and 2 thirds becomes 14 thirds. Now we multiply 7, negative 7 over 1 by negative 3 fourteenths. 7 goes into 14 two times, so we'll have 2 in the denominator, and we multiply straight across to get 3 halves. Two negatives multiply together to be a positive number, so now we have 3 halves, or 3 divided by 2, which equals 1 and a half. So the answer is one and a half, and we box our answer. Four and two thirds divided by seven. So first we convert the mixed number four and two thirds into an improper fraction, which becomes 14 thirds. Now we have 14 thirds divided by seven over one, which is the same as 14 thirds times 1 seventh. 7 goes into 14 two times, which gives us 2 in the numerator. Now we multiply the numerators across to get 2 and the denominators across to get 3. 2 thirds. Box our answer. The same rules for dividing fractions work when you have equations with variables. 3 over x divided by x over 2 equals 3 over x times the reciprocal of x over 2, which is 2 over x. Multiply the numerators across to get 6 and the denominators across to get x squared. Make note that x cannot equal 0 because you cannot divide a number by 0. a over 4 divided by 2b over 3 equals a over 4 times the reciprocal, which is 3 over 2b. Now we just multiply across the numerators to get 3a and the de denominators to get 8b, making note that b cannot equal 0. And we box our answer. If a number is given by a fractional part of an unknown number, we can find that unknown number by division. One sixth is one half of what number? I like to rewrite that number sentence as an equation. So is is equal and of is times. So then we have one sixth equals one half times what number? In this case, we will call this unknown number y. Now we have 1 sixth equals 1 half times y. When your equation has variables, it's a good idea to use either the dot to indicate multiplication or parentheses or just the number in front of the variable letter. That way you don't end up confusing your times symbol for the variable x. Now I will rewrite the equation 
with the variable on the left hand side. That way you know up front what is the variable you are solving for. So it's one half y equals one sixth. One half y is the same as one half times y over one. And you multiply both the numerators together and the denominators to get y over two. So now we rewrite the equation as y over 2 equals 1 6. Now we multiply both sides of the equation by the number 2. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side of the equation for, the, for it to be equal. On the left-hand side of the equation, the 2's cancel. On the right-hand side of the equation, 2 goes into 6 three times. So now we have y over 1 on the left hand side equals 1 third or y equals 1 third. And we box our answer. Now we can double check whether we did this problem correctly by seeing whether 1 half times 1 third equals 1 six. So then we do the calculation there and we'd find out that yes it does check out one half of one third equals one sixth seven fifteenths is two thirds of what number once again we rewrite that number sentence as an equation seven fifteenths equals two thirds times x or y or z whatever variable you want to use. In this case, I will use y again. So now we have the equation 7 fifteenths equals 2 thirds times y. And I will rewrite that so that my times is not written as an x, but is written as a parentheses. Okay, so I have 7 fifteenths equals 2 thirds y. 2 thirds y is 2 thirds times y over 1, or 2y over 3. So I rewrite that equation again to be 7 fifteenths equals 2y over 3. I will isolate that y by multiplying 2 thirds with the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. And whatever I do on one side of the equation, I need to do on the other side of the equation so that it stays equal. So on the right-hand side of the equation, the threes cancel and the twos cancel, which leaves y by itself on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side of the equation, three goes into 15 five times. And now I just multiply the numerators across and the denominators across to get 7 tenths. So y equals 7 tenths, and I box my answer. And I can double check my calculations to see if 2 thirds of 7 tenths equals 7 fifteenths. So 2 thirds times 7 tenths. Does that equal 7 fifteenths? And I do the calculations and I find that yes, it does check out. David bought one half of the pizza. He cut it into five equal pieces. What fractional part of the whole pizza does each piece have? So I draw out the equation. I draw out a pizza and I cut it in half. And then I divide up half of that pizza into five equal pieces. So I can figure out what fractional part of the whole pizza does each piece have. So the question is, what is one fifth of one half? And I can rewrite that number sentence in, as an equation. So what is can be rewritten as y equals one fifth of, of means times, one half. So y equals one fifth times one half. One fifth times one half equals one tenth. So each slice of the pizza is 
one-tenth of the whole pizza. And box your answer. A car travels 150 miles on eight and one-third gallons of fuel. How far does it travel on one gallon of fuel? So we start by drawing out a picture of the problem to show all the facts of the problem and what is the question or equation we need to solve in order to answer the question. So we have 150 miles traveled on eight and one-third gallons of fuel. So how far can the car travel on one gallon of fuel? Now, sometimes in a problem like this, our minds get a little confused when we see a complicated number, like eight and one-third gallons. We might be able to have some more clarity on how to approach this problem if we substitute an easier number, like five. So if we said, the car can travel 150 miles on five gallons of fuel. How far can it go on one gallon of fuel? We know that it's a division problem, 150 divided by five. Okay, now we just go back to the original problem, which uses eight and one-third gallons of fuel, and we just treat it as if it's a division problem, 150 miles divided by eight and one-third. So first we need to convert eight and one third into an improper fraction of 25 thirds. Now we have 150 divided by 25 thirds. We multiply the denominator 25 thirds by its reciprocal 3 25ths so that the denominator becomes one. And what we do in the denominator, we must also do in the numerator so we don't change the value of the equation. So the denominator is one, we can ignore that now, and we just work on the numerator, 150 times 3 25ths, which is the same as 150 over one times 3 25ths, and we multiply straight across, but first we can simplify 150 divided by 25 equals 6. So we cancel the 25 in the denominator and write 6 in the numerator. Now it's just 6 times 3, which is 18. So the car can travel 18 miles on 1 gallon of fuel. And we box our answer. Richard stayed at home four nights of the day. The time he studied math was three quarters of the time he stayed at home. What fractional part of the day did Richard study math? So the question is, what is three fourths of four ninths? And we turn that number sentence into an equation. Remember, of means times. So the Equation is 3 fourths times 4 ninths. Now we simplify before we multiply. The fours cancel and 3 goes into 9 3 times. So we write 3 in the denominator and we multiply across to get 1 third. Richard spent 1 third of the day to study math. And we box our answer. Richard studied math one-third of the day. The time he studied math was three-quarters of the time he stayed at home. What fractional part of the day did Richard stay at home? So we draw out the problem, draw out a bar to indicate a full day, and we break it into three equal parts. Now we highlight one of those parts to show one-third of the day, which is how much time Richard studied math. So the time he spent studying math, the highlighted portion of that bar, was the same as three quarters of the time he stayed at home. So let's draw that out. So the same bar highlighted above is divided into three equal sections, and then we add one more of those sections to indicate three-fourths to show the time he stayed at home. 
The question we need to answer is what fractional part of the day did Richard stay at home? So one third equals three fourths of what number? We rewrite that number sentence into the equation one third equals three fourth times x. Remember, of means times, and in this case, we will call what number x. To solve for x, we multiply 3 quarters x times the reciprocal of 3 quarters, which is 4 thirds. That leaves us 1 times x on the right-hand side of the equation, or just x by itself. But whatever we do on one side of the equation, we must also do on the other side of the equation in order to keep the equation equal. So we must multiply the left-hand side of the equation also with 4 thirds. So the reciprocals on the right-hand side of the equation cancel each other out to leave 1 times x, or just plain x. And on the left-hand side, we multiply the numerators together to get 4, and the denominators, 3 times 3, to get 9. So x equals 4 ninths. Richard spent 4 ninths of the day at home. And we box our answer. How many pieces of wires two and a half feet long can be cut from a wire 27 and one half feet long. So we draw a picture of a wire that's 27 and a half feet long, and we draw out sections that are two and a half feet long. How many of those sections can be made by the wire? So the equation would be 27 and one half divided by two and a half. That equation will answer the question, how many pieces of, the number of pieces of wire that can be made. So first we convert both the mixed numbers into improper fraction, which makes the numerator 55 halves and the denominator will be five halves. And we rewrite that equation as 55 halves divided by 5 halves. Now we multiply the denominator with its reciprocal, 2 fifths, so that we can get a 1 in the denominator. Whatever we do in the denominator, we must also do in the numerator so that we don't change the value of the equation. Now the denominator, the reciprocals, multiply to equal 1, and we can ignore that and focus on the numerator. 2's cancel in the numerator, and 5 goes into 55 11 times, which gives us 11 as an answer. So there are 11 pieces of wire made. And we box our answer. The exercises for dividing fractions can be found on pages 75 and 76 of the Beginning Algebra book. Please do as many problems as you need in order to master the material. Please check your answers with those in the back of the book to make sure you did the problems correctly. And also, I draw your attention to the chapter exercises on pages 77 through 78. Please do those problems as well as a review of all of the operations regarding fractions. And check your answers with those in the back of the book as well. Please see the link in the description box below this video for the files on those materials. If you find my video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share. Thank you for joining me at Do the Math America.